I want us to transition and look how Jesus is going to redefine greatness by service. Mark chapter 10, back to our original text. We're going to pick it up in verse 42. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. But not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you. By the way, he's not saying you shouldn't strive for that. I mean, he actually says, whoever wants to become great, and some of you should strive for that. You should strive to want to become great, but here's how. You must become a servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave or servant of all. And here's the verse, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. There it is. Now, I don't know if you underline or highlight in your Bible, or maybe you do both, and you, you know, put a box or a square or something around it. I would encourage you to do that with verse 45. Look at it again. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Uh, this is a revolutionary verse in so many ways. I mean, this is Jesus telling us why he came. Like here in just a couple months, we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But here, Jesus is telling us why there was a birth. We know that Jesus would come. He would give his life for us as a ransom, that he would pay the penalty of our sins on the cross. And this is the gospel. It is the gospel that we love. It's the gospel that we cherish. It's the gospel that we hang on to. And here's my prayer for us, that we never get over the gospel. Like we never get over that we were lost and for those of us who put our hope, our faith, our trust in Christ, we are saved. We've been found. We become a child of God. Like, don't ever get tired of that message that Jesus died as a ransom for us to pay the price of salvation, to save us from sin, from shame, from death, and from hell. But here's the thought this morning. Jesus came not just to save us. Jesus said, I came to serve you. So Jesus came not just to save us, but to serve us. Now, the word that Mark uses here, this, this word serve or servant, is a word that we would use today as uh, someone who would wait on tables. Much like what Stephen was as the first person ever martyred after the death of Christ, it, we would call Stephen like basically the bread boy. He was the one passing out bread to the widows, and that is the same word here. It's this word of someone waiting on a table or someone serving you. I mean, think about it for a minute. When you go to a restaurant and someone comes to your table and they say, uh, how may I serve you? How can I help you? And if you're at Chick-fil-A, it's like, it's my pleasure to do so, right? But in a way, that is the posture that Jesus has towards you. And, and I just want to encourage you, especially with everything that we've gone through in the last several weeks, that you could just allow that to soak in this morning, that right now, amidst all that we've been walking through, that Jesus said, according to his words in the scripture, that I came to seek and to save the lost and to serve, that I didn't come to be served. You know, when we were looking at this passage today, the, the teaching team and I, we almost felt like, like a, is it blasphemous to say that? Are we allowed to say, to talk about Jesus as our waiter? Like, what does that mean? And yet Jesus is the one who said, I came to serve. It's why I'm here. So when you think about it. There is nothing more this morning than all of us need than for Jesus to serve us, to Jesus to help us. Now, I, I hopefully I can put this in context for you. I'm not able to be the husband to Sharon 
unless Jesus serves me. I'm not able, I cannot be, the father to three boys and as of last Saturday, uh, a daughter-in-law, so we finally have a girl in the house, right? I'm not able to be their parent unless Jesus is serving me. I can't be your pastor without Jesus serving me. I, I can't be a man of integrity and walk in holiness without Jesus serving me. So desperately... I, all of us, need Jesus' help. We need him to serve us in those ways. So again, Chris and I were at lunch, I think it was Wednesday, and we were beating this thought up where Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. And what does that look like for us today? Well, one of the things we know is Jesus said that I've go I'm going to leave. And once I leave, someone greater is going to come, that I'm going to give you guys a gift. It's what we would refer to as the Holy Spirit. It's the, the third part of the Trinity, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And Jesus is the one who says, I'm going to serve you by giving you the gift of the Holy Spirit, where when you become a believer, not only do you experience forgiveness and salvation, but you get a gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of you in a way to serve you to become more and more like God so that your life can offer him honor and glory. But this whole thought of, does it belittle the risen Christ to say he was and is and will ever be a servant to his people? Well, I would say if servant meant... One who only takes orders, then yes. If servant meant, uh, or if we thought like we were the master of Jesus, then yes. Like you even saw in the, the scene there where, where Jesus gets almost angry, frustrated, uh, with the disciples when they ask of this request, right? So it's not a servant as in Santa Claus, right? It's not a servant as in someone who just gives you everything and anything you want. That's not the case. But it does not dishonor him to say that we are weak and only through you can we be strong. It does not dishonor him to say that he is the only one who can serve us in the areas that we need him the most. See, it does not dishonor him to say that it's not even possible for us to love without you serving us by loving us first. That does not dishonor him. I want you to see how the Apostle Paul beautifully captures this in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. It's going to be on the screens, but this is one of those verses you want to turn to, all right? So on your phone, in your, your copy of God's Word, if you would turn to Philippians, all the I-A-N-S's in the Bible come together, so if that kind of helps you, right? So near the end of the Bible, uh, if you would find Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. And here's how Paul captures this moment. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, God the Son, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped or that he had to hold on to, but he emptied himself. By taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. You see, we need Jesus to serve us because in serving us, he saves us. 